So I want to talk about uh, other kinds of persistent data structures available for uh, closure programmers, but not in the standard library. So first, a little about me. I live about 250 kilometers northwest of here uh, in a town called Vasa. Uh, I work for a non-profit organization called ACVO, uh, based in the Netherlands, but I work remotely. <coughs> uh, we do mobile phone-based field surveys. Uh, applications for mobile phone-based field surveys. And uh, this is used for different kinds, uh, different kinds of use cases, but it's been used in, uh, for damage assessment in uh, Nepal after, after the earthquake, also in Vanuatu after the cyclone. Uh, we also use it a lot for water point mapping and monitoring in Africa and India and so on. There's some closure script there and some closure and lots and lots of Java and JavaScript. <coughs> uh, so I want to talk about persistent data structures and <coughs> sorry. Uh, they're well understood from a uh, computer science point of view, I think. The new ones are developed all the time. But from a software engineering point of view, they're still pretty new for, let's say, mainstream, if we can call them that. Um, so I think we still discover new advantages. Uh, for example, using concurrency and uh, uh, this whole thing about uh, React that you are, because of fast equality checking, you can really optimize the rendering. Uh, another thing is because of structural, sh structural sharing, um, it's cheap, memory cheap to keep uh, keep the history, which enables easy implementation of undo. So I want to look at other use cases, uh, practical use cases of, of these data structures. And there are many uh, interesting ones that are not in core. So priority maps, where you sort by the value, so sorted maps, but by value. Uh, C tries, int maps, and sets. So these are specific for integer uh, optimized. Uh, but I want to focus on uh, these two, core RRB vector and data AVL. Uh, they are contrib libraries uh, available for both closure and closure script. And uh, I haven't implemented any of them. It, both are implemented by Michel Martstick. OK. So let's start with core RRB vector. It's uh, based on a paper from a few years ago called RRB trees, efficient immutable vectors by Bagwell and Rompf. These are from the Scala community, I think. Uh, and uh, they are very similar to the closure built-in vectors. Uh, but they have two key uh, additions or additional features. So the first one is uh, what I call true subvector. Uh, you have this in four closure vectors as well. But uh, for closure vectors, it's more like a window when you call subvec. So you don't, you don't actually 
if you call subvec, the green part of the upper vector won't be garbage collected in closure. But this returns a completely new vector with structural sharing, but still completely new. So the, the green stuff can go away. Uh, the other operation is uh, concatenation, fast logarithmic time concatenation. So you don't have it for closure vectors. They can only grow one element at a time at the end. So if you write a, uh, if you concatenate two closure vectors, it's going to be linear. But this is this is logarithmic time. So the amazing thing is these work, these two operations work on existing closure vectors at better complexity, performance complexity. Uh, so when you call catvec uh, on closure vectors, ordinary closure vectors, you don't get closure vectors back, but you get these RRB vectors back. But they behave exactly like closure vectors. They are a little bit slower, uh, especially for iteration. And I think especially for the new version of closure, which really optimized the reduce. Uh, and they are not as battle tested, so they haven't seen as much use. So where can you use this? Uh, Brandon Bloom uses this in his uh, fast idiomatic 3D printer, which it's called, a 3D printer for closure, and he uses them as double-ended queues. So a double-ended queue is a, say, a vector which can grow both from the left and the right. And the implementation is trivial. So uh, I guess because of his algorithms, he only ever did both operations at once, which is why he, he has implemented it like this. And if, it, if you were to use, say, into, which you can do to, to concatenate closure vectors, this would be linear, O n instead of log n. So another use case, closure cup 2014. We had this uh, idea, crazy idea, <laughs> to analyze these git diffs and tra track uh, file changes line by line. So I guess you've all seen those. They are called, they are called hunks. And uh, we parse these, uh, create these insert, edit, and delete operations. And uh, we try to keep a vector of line edit counts. So for example, uh, delete 32, 1 means uh, at index 32, at, at line 32, or I guess line 33, uh, delete one line. And insert at line 14, uh, two lines, with line edit count one. So the above is the edit count. So with these RRB vectors, we were able to implement this efficiently. Uh, for the delete case, just write a little function called cut, uh, which takes a vector, a start, and a length. And using combination of catvec and subvec, just put it together. And you can shrink a vector uh, in logarithmic time. And uh, for the, the other case, uh, this is just a help, helper function split. So you can take a vector, split it in half, 
or at an index. And using this, then we can splice in, a vec in another, another vector. So splice takes a vector, an index, and a second vector, and just put it in the middle. And also, this is also logarithmic time, which it wouldn't be with the ordinary closure vectors. So I think you can consider using RRB vector when you need these specific kinds of operations. Uh, for small vectors, I don't think there's a lot, a lot of win, because the, the closure vectors are surprisingly fast, I would say. So they would, be, they would be either have to be big vectors, or you would have to do it many times because of your, the algorithm you're, you're running. So you really need to evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis. OK, so that's RRB vectors. Uh, ne next, data AVL. So these are uh, sorted sets and sorted maps. Uh, Clojure has both sorted sets and maps. Uh, these are similar, again, with a few extra operations. So I want to show you this. Uh, let's see, live. Ah. Here. Just to show you the basic operations. So let's see. Ah. If you used uh, sorted sets before in Clojure, you'll see it. we use them similarly. So this, uh, this is just the list of words that you have it in, in the, the operating system provides. So I read this in, uh, create a line seek of it, and insert it into a sorted set, like this. Uh, these are counted. So constant time count, that's 200. That's not good. Two hundred thirty-five thousand uh, words, and unfortunately, it doesn't contain closure. The word closure. So uh, we can fix this. Just redefine words and add it. So you add to the sorted set with conch, and now I hope, yeah, now it's there. Uh, Nth, so you can, because it's sorted, uh, nth makes sense, which it doesn't do for ordinary sets. Uh, you can't call nth on a sorted set, on a closure sorted set. So this is new. You can get at an index. All these operations now are not av available in, uh, in closure's version of sorted set. So you can get the nearest word. Uh, on the left hand side and on the right hand side. Uh, you can get the index of a of an element with rank of where it is in the uh, in the set. And you can get a sub-range. So this is one of the most interesting uh, operations that you can do. Unfortunately, you can't see it here. Let's see. So this would be uh, all the words between closure and clone. And you can see there's a few, not too many. Uh, and what's returned here is a is an another sorted set, so another AVL set. So you can continuously call a sub range. So 
again, Clojure also has subrange uh, on its sorted sets, but that I think it's called subseq. So it returns a sequence, it doesn't return a, a set. So with nth and uh, subrange, you can get all elements between two indexes at logarithmic time, like this. So this can be used, for example, for pagination. Uh, and split key, uh, you split a vector at a keyword at, or at, a, at an element or by index. So what we can do is write a function uh, called similar, combining a lot of these, Rankov, nearest, and uh, split at twice. So what this function does is uh, it takes a set, an item, and a number and gives you uh, neighbors uh, of that element in the set as a new set. So we can check which words are similar to closure. And here they are, some of them. Uh, also, we can do different comparators. So you can have custom sort orders. So if we sort by the reverse, we just reverse the string and sort. We can, uh, I need to re-import this now with sorted set by, like this. And now if we do this one, you can see all the jur words. <laughs> uh, so lining and will not allow most of these. You will actually get a warning if you create a project named upconjure also. You can try it. Uh, we can compare by length. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna skip this because we don't have time. Uh, let's do the other one. So we can compare by length, and if the length is equal, uh, we compare ordinarily. So this is just another example of the same thing. And similar words to composure with the same length. So this is a great tool if you want to find a a name for your next, next project. You can find a lot of interesting things here. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So more real-world use cases, uh, two of them. Uh, one is uh, datomic pagination. So what you can do is you can query uh, and pour the result into an AVL sorted set. So query from Datomic is an ordinary set, not ordered or not sorted. And uh, if you turn them into entities, entities are lazy. So you only actually need to realize the attribute that you sort on if it's a huge result set. And then you can use these rank queries for, for the page results. Uh, another use case, which uh, I, I discussed this with uh, Michel, the implementer. So this is a use case he's been, I think he's uh, been developing or he has heard of. So this is uh, windowed event data keyed by timestamp. So if you get a lot of events into, into your process, but you don't want to keep all of them, 
uh, you can do it like this. So keep events in a sorted set and sort by timestamp. Uh, then you periodically, you reduce this set using these rank queries again. So you can keep the last one million, say. And uh, because this subrange returns a new set, you never need to, you never, there's never a need for a uh, linear complexity operation. So that's, that's really interesting, I think. So, a quote on data structures. And data structures are central to programming. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Thank you.